Hi, I'm Dr. Sherry Berger here with this week's Holohan's Hot Topic. I'm with Dr. Melissa Holohan and we're talking about what's buzzing in the world of small animal emergency and critical care. Doctor, what's going on? Well, this week, Sherry, we're going to talk about measuring um, Doppler blood pressure compared to direct blood pressure measurement in cats. Um, obviously, we're always trying to find uh, the most uh, appropriate diagnostic tool um, to measure blood pressure in cats, and uh, many of us will use the Doppler. Um, so this study was actually looking at the use of Doppler compared to the gold standard. So the gold standard is direct blood pressure measurement. So this is going to be either a direct arterial line in the femoral or the dorsal pedal or probably the most common placement. However, as many of us know, direct blood pressure measurement is very technically challenging. Um, in some cases, can be uncomfortable for the patient and um, in some situations can be unsuitable um, for clinical situations. And probably the most common ones we would see um, would be patients with the underlying coagulopathy or we're not able to get arterial access for whatever reason. Um, and because of where the placement is, some of these patients, um, we're not able to leave the catheters in for very long, sometimes only 24 hours because the, of patient movement and the catheter gets dislodged or isn't working any longer. Um, so although there are several methods for indirect blood pressure monitoring, I think we're still as veterinarians trying to figure out which is most accurate and particularly in cats because they are smaller patients. Now, in human medicine, the American Association of Medical Instrumentation has set standards for performance in blood pressure devices, um, but to date, few of any veterinary devices meet these standards, so we're still trying to work towards uh, quality um, in our diagnostic tools. The objective of this study, again, was to determine blood pressure measurement using the ultrasonic Doppler uh, flow detector and to see if this was in good agreement with the direct blood pressure measurement, uh, particularly in anesthetized cats. 39 cats that were undergoing routine castration in a university hospital were used for this study. The cats were divided into two groups. Group A had a 24 gauge catheter placed in the dorsal pedal, and group B had a 20 gauge catheter placed in the femoral artery. At that time, systolic, diastolic, and mean arterial pressures were directly measured, and then those blood pressures were compared to the indirect value um, taken by the Doppler measurement. So the results show that there was no difference between the two groups, group A and group B, and again those were the different gauges of catheters in the different locations, um, so all of those groups were combined for statistical analysis. What they found was poor agreement um, with significant bias between the Doppler measurements and the direct uh, directly measured blood, uh, blood pressures. S specifically, the systolic arterial pressure bias was negative 8.8, .8, and the diastolic pressure bias was 27. And so that's a pretty large range when you're looking at a, a, a potential Doppler blood pressure of 160, when in reality it may be 130 or 140. Um, and that can be make a big difference clinically when you're making decisions for your patient. The methodology, the weight, the sex, um, and the replicates, because they did the measurement several times, um, did not have a significant effect on the difference between the indirect and direct measurements. So the authors of this study concluded that the results suggested poor agreement between Doppler values and directly measured blood pressures in anesthetized cats, and that the use of Doppler in cats could be misleading and readings should be interpreted with caution. Um, and then, again, based on the American Association of Medical Instrumentation, um, to date, veterinary uh, medicine were not meeting those standards. And based on the ACVIM guidelines, good agreement in their um, eyes is defined as um, limits, a limit of agreement within 15 millimeters of mercury. And as you can see from the bias being about 27, we're still not uh, meeting those um, agreements, uh, particularly with the Doppler method in this study. And so I think that the, the main takeaway point from this study is that, one, you have to um, interpret the results of the study in light that these cats were anesthetized. And so there may be some differences there um, compared to a cat in a clinical situation not under the influence of anesthesia. Um, or anesthetics. Um, but um, we also need to take a look at the clinical picture in our cats. So 
not just looking at one number, um, but looking at the, the patient as a whole. Um, so what we do at our hospital is we use Doppler measurements quite commonly in our cats under anesthesia, um, but we're also using other parameters like heart rate, um, clinical assessments, and we're not just getting one uh, blood pressure, we're getting uh, multiple blood pressures. And so I think the biggest thing with using Doppler is looking at the trend. Um, particularly in cats under anesthesia, um, looking at the, the trend over time. And so that's it this week on Hallahan's Hot Topics.